If we have a quorum, we can begin. You've got everybody. All right. Uh, if I could have your attention, please. Uh, this will be a virtual meeting of the Marinwood Community Service District Park and Recreation Commission pursuant to Executive Order N-29-20 issued by the Governor of the Great State of California. There will not be a public location for participating in this meeting. Any interested member of the public can participate telephonically or via internet by using, by utilizing the web link or, or dial in information on this agenda. At the meeting, when the meeting chair requests public comment, members of the public participating in the live meeting, either via internet or telephone, shall indicate their desire to speak. If participating via internet, please click the raise hand feature located within the Zoom application screen. If connected via telephone, please dial star nine. Members of the public are reminded to adhere to the three minute time limit for public comment on both non-agenda items and agenda items. To aid in this, a three minute timer will begin and be displayed during each public comment. If the speaker has not concluded their comment at the end of the three minute time period, they will be asked to conclude their comment. After having requested that the speaker conclude their comment, the chair may elect to end the comment period for the individual commenter. All public comments are to be directed to the commission and not to staff or other members of the public. In some instances, the commission may request staff to provide a brief response during the meeting or refer the commenter to follow up directly with staff outside of the meeting. So we'll get started. Our first item, number one, is uh, adoption of our agenda as presented. Uh, ask the commission if there's any questions or comments or changes they'd like to see. And hearing none, we'll uh, adopt our agenda as presented. Uh, we'll move on to item number two. I will now ask for public comment on non-agenda items. One second, John, I'm sorry. Okay. Good evening, everyone. It's a beautiful evening. I hope you're enjoying it. Good evening, Mr. Nestle. I hope you're enjoying it like me. Um, why do you serve? Why do you serve on the Park and Recreation Commission? What, what you do is your legacy. And the legacy is what uh, the Parks Commission does for our parks. Um, government is an expression of values. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, what we choose to do with our funds, what our priorities are, that's what we are as a community. Now this afternoon, as you know, they opened up the bidding for uh, the park, uh, project uh, for, for the maintenance project. Initially, when this first uh, came to light, we we got quotes thirty thousand, fifty thousand, hundred thousand dollars. Well, today the base bid on the project is one point, over a million dollars from all five bidders. That does not include, I believe, it doesn't include any of Bill Hansel's fees or any of the prep work that we've. Uh, brought to this place. Um, we have choices and uh, we're not uh, putting in park benches, we're not fixing the fountains, we're not maintaining our, our picnic benches, we're not putting in uh, pickleball uh, uh, court lines, we're, we're, there's a lot that we're not doing and I would hope that um, we could have a more holistic uh, approach uh, to park maintenance and not spend all of our money on this one little project uh, that it has consumed so much of our staff time and will consume uh, tax dollars for many years to come. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Stephen.
We'll move on to item number three. This is the draft minutes of the February 23rd, 2021 Park and Recreation Commission meeting. We are looking to approve these minutes. Uh, comments from the commission. No comments, but I'd make it a motion to approve. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, motion by Campo, second by Fine. Uh, we'll vote, all in favor? Uh, you need a public public comment, John. Oh, excuse me, that's all right. Any public comment on the uh, draft minutes of the February 23rd meeting? Yeah, one, one second, please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, David? Yes, I, I believe they're incomplete. Um, uh, as usual, um, uh, they're vague. It, it's incomplete in detail. Um, I don't quite know how we can, you know, get some of the communications uh, recognized uh, from me and from other members of the public. Um, I did have a number of questions after that fire meeting, mostly concerning issues with. Um, uh, with erosion control and um, also wanting more specificity on how much of the understory will be removed. Um, I'm really not comfortable with what the knowledge that we have so far. I think it, this is gonna be a massive project and is going to really impact our neighborhoods quite a bit. Um, so I guess my comment is, um, you know, there's some information that is simply not rising to the surface of the public meeting. The other thing that I sent, and I did send a, a few of you this, I sent some links on some uh, playground structures and playground companies, uh, nature pr playground companies that I thought had a lot of cool ideas. And I simply want to, uh, I realize this is going to be d discussed later, but I, I want to get this stuff into the mix so it can be discussed. Um, it's kind of frustrating. Thank you. Okay, is that it, Stephen? Yeah, that was it. Okay, this is again our uh, draft minutes of our park and recreation meeting in February. Uh, so now I would, uh, I guess I'll call for those motions again that we've had the public comment. You had a Campo motion to approve and fine seconded it. Okay, if they'll stick with that, then we'll, we'll call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? So the uh, approval passes. But now we'll move on to item number four. This is the draft minutes of the March 16th, 2021 joint Park and Recreation Fire Commission special meeting. Again, we are looking to approve this. Uh, any comments on these minutes from the commission? John, if, I, if you wouldn't mind, um, obviously these minutes uh, don't follow the action uh, minutes format that has been adopted and approved by the board for all of our minutes. I, I kind of took it upon myself to put a lot more detail into these minutes because this was a, a presentation and an informative meeting uh, as opposed to an action meeting of the commission um, yes. and there were no action items so that is why these minutes are uh, you know more detailed in regards to a commissioner and staff and comments Said, but one question that was on their proposed uh, tax increase uh, for the parks. So uh, how, how much is that? And does that go on like a, a ballot or is it just, what's the uh, You're You're that? jumping to the board minutes. Oh, sorry. No problem. Uh, but I'll answer that question for you when we get there. Okay. <laughs> so again, any other uh, comments from commissioners regarding this uh, March 16th meeting. No, and again, I, I would make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second the motion. Um, 
I would ask for uh, any public comment on this meeting. Sure. And the other thing I would say, too, before we go there, John, is uh, you look at the top of the minutes. That meeting was recorded uh, and posted to YouTube along with the complete presentation that was given by the veg management specialist as well. Um, so it's out there. It's on our YouTube channel. It can certainly be viewed and watched. Uh, I thought it was a good informative meeting that covered a lot of ground. So uh, public comment coming up. One second. Uh, can you hear me? Hi, Stephen. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I guess I, my previous comments were, were partly about this meeting. So um, I, I'd like to go into the erosion issues. You know, the most expensive uh, settlements that we've had in recent years have been the problem of open space falling on private property. This is why this erosion issue is not insignificant. Our, basically, our open space starts when, uh, with the sharp incline of, of, of elevation out of people's yards. So virtually everything along um, this path, this clearance path, is you know, a potential problem. It, these, this can be mitigated. But it certainly needs to be discussed, and it needs to be investigated, and it needs to be handled responsibly. I don't know uh, that we can rely 100% on the fire, uh, wildfire group to uh, bail us out if they're causing uh, erosion issues. Um, so that, that's one issue. And then um, the other thing really was a question that I I posited is, you know, how can we how can we productively interact with you guys if uh, you know our uh, communication is difficult to get to you? I don't believe that uh, the the uh, district manager forwarded my email to uh, some of the the commissioners. So basically, uh, you know, I'm not being heard. Um, I I want to have a respectful dialogue with you, each one of you. Um, but, uh, you know, when you don't have email, when you don't have phone numbers, um, and the uh, district manager doesn't pass on information, you know, basically I'm left to three minutes um, and not a whole lot of respectful dialogue. And I would like, like that opportunity with each one of you. Uh, I, in my view, you have the most important uh, position uh, in the district uh, because I love the open space and I think it really defines us as a community. Um, so, a question. Just I want to leave the question as how can you not only interact with me but other members of the public? It's important and it is, um, this is your legacy. Thank you. Okay, again, uh, focusing in on the March 16th meeting. You know, John, can I um, respond to that? To, to his comment or to the... Uh, yeah, to the comment, which is part of the item that we're discussing. Uh, I, I would say briefly. Um, you know, as I discussed in, in that joint fire meeting, I have a lot of concerns about how that work proceeds, erosion, special status species, invasive species, um, and I care deeply about the open space. So I share the comment, um, and I've had some email dialogue with the vegetation specialist, with um, Chief White, to get into a little more details of how that process would go and some of the concerns that I had. Um, I, I am planning on setting up a site visit to go look at the sites personally and kind of think through um, the processes and, you know, again, some of the concerns raised regarding erosion, invasive species, um, sensitive species. How is this work going to proceed? I, I think we all recognize fire danger is a very real issue. We all want to see this work move forward, but we want to see it move forward thoughtfully. And so that's what I intend to focus on. Well, certainly, I think this could be, uh, you know, certainly an, an item, a future agenda item. 
Uh, but tonight we're just looking for approval of what was said the minute from that date. Agreed. Anything else from commissioners? Then I will ask for a, a motion to approve those minutes. You had a motion. Campo uh, made the motion to approve and Tune seconded. Okay, thank you. Uh, then we'll uh, vote. All in favor? Aye. Um, and can vote on this? Yes, she can. Okay, then we're unanimous. Moving on. Uh, now we will look at the draft minutes of the April 13th, 2021 board meeting. This is just an item for our review. Any uh, comments or questions from commissioners? Ann had a question earlier. Um, wanted to know about the two items that were on there regarding increasing the amount of the special tax. Um, in brief, it is written in the, both of these taxes are voter approved taxes that were passed by the majority uh, at the ballot. Within the ordinances that was approved, it allows and calls for an increase in the amount of CPI, the consumer price index, a fancy term for inflation. It's measured as of December 31st every year, the year prior, and it comes out through uh, the, the name of the state uh, agency is escaping me, but for this coming year, it was 2%. Um, that's uh, pretty low, uh, relatively. It's, I've, I've seen it as high as 4.5. It usually hovers somewhere around 3 to 3.2. Uh, this past year, it was 2%, and the board approved um, a CPI increases. The board, it's just a formal action that the board has to do. It's already written in, but they have to pass it by resolution, because then that resolution goes to the Department of Finance, who manages the tax rolls. And they need that uh, document showing that this is exactly what the new price is, what it was increased by, what the date was, how much it becomes. Make sense? Thank you. Yes. Any other uh, comments? Then I would ask for a uh, public comment on the draft minutes for the April 13th board meeting. Yeah, one second. Hello again, Stephen. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what's going on here. Um, I, I see see that somebody's sharing my screen. Um, yeah, I just a brief comment. If you're not attending these meetings or watching these meetings, you really are uh, really don't know what's going on um, because the minutes that you receive lack really critical detail and characterization of uh, the comments at the meeting. Likewise, uh, your agendas are uh, very vague to the board of directors, so they don't really know what you're saying um, either. And I think this is a problem. Uh, it could be corrected through additional dialogue and uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Um, I did ask a question and I was ignored uh, by the chairman. Uh, you know, I would like a dialogue. Maybe that's maybe the message is, is that he plans to ignore me and plans to ignore other members of the public. Um, but I, I think that's really not fruitful uh, for a democratically elected uh, group of people and commissioners who serve uh, at the, the pleasure of, of the commissioners and uh, in service of the public. Uh, we need to hear from you. We need to have dialogue. Um, I would also like to thank uh, John um, Campo. Um, sounds like he's on top of things. I would like to uh, support his efforts and uh, I think uh, because he's probably the most educated in all of all, any of the boards, I, I think his input into this uh, project is invaluable. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
All right, we'll move on to our next item. Uh, item number five, or excuse me, item number six, the Marinwood Park Place Structures Replacement Project. Uh, this is an item for our discussion. Anyone like to begin? Well, I can kick it off really quickly uh, and then turn it over to all of you if, if that's okay. Um, you know, as we said, you know, uh, admittedly, staff just has not had a lot of opportunity yet to make a lot of headway on this. We've been kind of focused in on some other uh, issues at hand, um, and we certainly anticipate those kind of coming to fruit here pretty quickly and allowing us to get in. But we did meet briefly, Luke and I met briefly with Commissioner Fine. Uh, we've traded some communication with Commissioner Shawson as well and have tried to get them some info, uh, but mostly just admittedly at this moment, uh, staff has not just yet had opportunity to make a lot of headway in this. Uh, anticipate that changing within the coming months. Thank you. Anything from commissioners? Uh, yeah, I, I'll just comment. So uh, Luke and Eric had a great initial list of I don't know, it was maybe 10, 12, 14 playground companies. And we kind of look through some of those. I gave some feedback on ones I thought were interesting. Um, and then there was another one um, that Eric sent recently that also looked good too, that had some, you know, um, sort of an inclusivity elements and cool climbing stuff. So, um, you know, there's a, there is some, you know, sort of preliminary design work, I think being done in the background, which is good as folks are thinking about it. Um, as far as, uh, me volunteering to help on the project. I actually have a little time between now and mid-June with the kids being back in school. So uh, I wanted to offer, if it's helpful, uh, to if you want me to reach out to a couple of these companies and have them just see what they say about some initial design ideas. I would just need a, a just a ballpark. I know you're working on the budget approval, but just a, a, you know, a, a, a number range or just a number that we're working towards um, and then either some measurements of the area or I could come out and just take the measurements myself with a tape measure just to get the, the planning kicked off. And then I can hand it over to, to Luke when he frees up with availability, if that's helpful. I'd be willing to do that between now and mid-June. Yeah, and I can um, uh, definitely give you those measurements uh, this week. I started that and I didn't quite get around to finishing that. So I'm, I'll, I'll make sure to get the, the footprints over to you just so we have something to you know, know what, what the playground companies are working with. Yeah, and then if just, Eric, if you could just share with me just a ballpark target number, just so I know what. Yeah, what I'm, I'm looking at, sorry, Ed, yeah. I'm looking at that right now. Um, and it's the same that was in at least February. And I think probably the March board pack, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, commission packet as well. I'm just trying to pull up that exact um, Prop 68 PR right here. Um, structure replacement. Uh, yeah, so the way it works is we are expected to receive up to $177,952 in funding. Um, we have to contribute another 20% of that which would uh, bring the grand total up to uh, approximately $222,500 of what is available. So the grant funding goes up to 177,952, and then we have to match 25% of that to become 20% of the total project cost. Okay. Um, so I would hate to leave grant money on the table. Um, and so that's kind of the direction that we, uh, the, the board has uh, authorized and want us to move forward with this project at the, uh, looking at that. Okay. I would think at the next meeting, which is in a month, I should be able to bring back just at least a few images. Like I, you know, I wouldn't promise full design, but I think the goal of this initial scoping is just to get an idea of how much can we get for our money from some of these playground companies and just get, just get some ideas around this. And then we may end up changing it, but just gives us a flavor for what we might be able to do. I think that would be helpful. Um, I'm okay. sure Luke and I can kind of uh, reach out to you and see if we can't help uh, support that and get you whatever info you need before we start digging that as well. Okay, and then if you want to forward, why don't you, if you would forward through to me too, just um, if there were a couple nature companies that Stephen mentioned, just, to just throw those into the pot too and I'll look through all of it. Sure. 
And then on this report, I, um, I reached out to uh, an, an old friend, Ashley Howe, who I think worked for the, um, the district at one point and um, had also has, um, was working for, I think, the city of Santa Fe when they recently redid their Albert Park playground and did a lot of community outreach for that. So um, she was um, gracious and excited to help us out by kind of sharing some of the process that they did for the community engagement piece there. And some, you know, had she had some useful advice about, you know, different steps in the process that she thinks we should definitely do. Um, I guess the one that I would flag is one of the first things that I, I think while just to kind of keep the ball rolling and try to, you know, maybe engage the community a little bit while we're doing that really helpful work that Anne has offered to do over the next month would be to like create a pretty basic community survey to just seek input from people about like, um, you know, you could like list the, some of the different features that we have in our current playground and ask people to sort of like rank them by importance. Um, you know, so slide and, um, swings and, you know, things like that. Um, uh, and then, um, and then also maybe have, you know, one or two open-ended questions of like, what is your, uh, what is your favorite playground in Marin County and why, or something like that. Um, just so that then, you know, once Ann does that work and we start to come around to, you know, looking at some things, we'll also have some data hopefully from our community about, you know, which features seem like musts for us to include and which are less important and, you know, which other playgrounds in the county, um, you know, are, have, are popular or have people support. Um, and we could, you know, send that out to people who've registered for recreation stuff on active.net or, and put a little signs up at the playground entrances with the little, you know, link to where people can fill out the survey. It just seems like that's something that I, I'd be happy to work with Luke and Eric or whoever else to put together you know, in, in relatively short order, I don't think it would be a heavy lift. And then that would allow the sort of process, the public process to kind of get rolling while we, while we continue to do some of our other homework. Well, I think that's a good idea. I just uh, wouldn't want to lay more on the staff. I know they're quite busy right now. So I'd, I'd use this coordinate with them when they have time, I think. Yeah, and I don't, it's, I mean, I've put survey monkeys together before, so it's not, you know, I, I could probably handle a fair amount, amount of that. I would just, I'll confer with them to make sure they, you know, I've, I've listed the existing uh, park equipment correctly or whatever uh, and get any other feedback they have on it. But I don't, I don't think I have to lean on them too hard to actually put that together. Maybe just, you know, printing the signs and posting them at the playground in a way that you guys feel comfortable with. Maybe that's something you guys could help with. Yeah, we can help too with links uh, and our mailing list and getting it out. Sorry, Luke, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead, please. Oh, no, that's about what I was going to say. Just, yeah, that sounds like very doable. Yeah, the and I, you know, one of the things that we had talked about when uh, Luke and I met with Ian briefly is, uh, you know, that's certainly something we want to get ahead of quickly in this project and help it to kind of steer the rest, I like a lot what Anne is saying and just in the terms of kind of some basic shopping, like, okay, here's what we got, how much will that get us? And then I think the work that Ian uh, is talking about helps us to kind of narrow down what's that broader uh, community input as to, you know, what they would like out of some of these playgrounds. It's, uh, and then maybe we can kind of start to analyze some of those results and look and then fine tune down a little bit uh, in terms of what exactly it is we're hoping to achieve out of this playground and then I think we could really start to engage vendors to a uh, to a deeper degree just in terms of kind of understanding what what is out there what kind of things are available and then eventually put this out so that we can start to receive uh, proposals on it. I would also think that when folks see the survey link they'll be excited and we want to know approximately when the construction would be. So it might be cute to put on there, like, you know, Marin Wood CSD is considering a, you know, some new playground equipment in and then put the year in there, you know, next year or whenever it is we would do it. 
I, I don't know. It's up to you, Ian. You're the like communications expert on this, but just one thought, because I think everyone will then start talking like, oh, the playground's going to be redone. When is that going to happen? And there'll be a buzz. Yeah. And just to clarify on that, um, and not that we have to wait this long, but it is uh, uh, by December of this year is our deadline to submit project applications. It is June uh, uh, to the funding authority. Um, and that doesn't mean the full, you know, project it just states, this is what we're doing, what they we're doing a playground, we're replacing, you know, what the scope of the project. Uh, June 2022 is when contracts need to be executed uh, for the approved project with the vendor. Uh, December 2023 is when the projects must be completed. Um, so there, it's a stretch of time, but I think as we start to get through that, you know, I just, I, I don't want to overpromise in terms of timing, um, but I'd like to just make sure we kind of look at this from a, uh, uh, you know, what is a realistic and a doable perspective. And I think a lot of times the vendors might have some, you know, hey, look, here's how long it takes for parts, you know, lead time on parts and equipment to get out, installation, so on and so forth. Um, would be helpful for us to start to know. And I do agree with Ann that uh, I think the, the public research of it's going to derive a lot of interest and excitement. You're, you're muted, Ann. And then construction would be sometime between June 2022 and December of 2023 in that 18-month period? Correct. Okay. Also helpful for when I'm kind of asking companies to give me some ballpark ideas on cost, too. They're probably going to want to know when. Yeah, and I would also, uh, you know, just from a practicality standpoint, and I'm sure Luke can chime in on this better, is also just looking at our usage patterns. Um, we certainly wouldn't want to do anything during camps and prime summer times. Uh, you know, if there's any way we can kind of gear this a little bit more towards, uh, you know, fall season uh, or even a spring, early spring season would probably be best. I'm not sure how feasible it is in the middle of winter. Yeah, I think that's those are definitely considerations we want to take um, to not impact our programs and, and the community too much that are out there using it. Sure. Eric or Luke, I'm kind of curious if there's other bookends that Ian and Ann need to think about as regards to there's a seems to be a time frame, a cost. I'm assuming that we're just going to try and replicate the age spectrum um, and stick with the same size footprint. Are there other things that kind of, I don't know, non-negotiable, the things that we need that kind of need to stay static or? Um, those are, yeah, uh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, uh, no, 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 you, you please. Uh, that was a good question, John. Um, the, the, the things with the, the footprint is very important. Um, it, it seems to me that we have uh, somewhat maxed out on um, what, how much equipment and how far it can extend in the uh, current park settings that we have. There's a bunch of uh, regulations on how far um, a fall zone for a swing set can be from the fence and from neighboring equipment. And, um, and so there's a lot of um, measurements that have been taken into consideration and I, everything that we have, um, there's not a lot of wiggle room as far as could we extend a slide this other direction, or could we add something a few feet over here? Um, we, we wouldn't be able to do much um, beyond what we have because of the, um, the nature of, of where the fences are and where the cement is without we're doing a kind of a whole re, um, redesign of the playground uh, altogether, which I don't think we have the funding uh, for at all at this point. So uh, we would look for something that would fit pretty pretty well in the current footprint. So that's something that um, and I'll, I'll be able to, to give more information uh, to you, Anne, in regards to where, where the flexibility is when it comes to that, um, and I'm, I'm working on that right now. But, uh, but that, that's that's an important consideration. Um, uh, but as be beyond that, I think we've touched on the things that are, um, you know, the the, the main limiting uh, factors that I that I can think of. You know, it might be helpful to know, I don't want to put more work on your plate. So if it's too hard, this is something, again, I could just come out and tape measure it. But to know, like, right, so there's the, the boundaries of the park, and then there's the, the current footprint of the two little play structures, right? So like, just wondering how big those are, because that would be the easiest plug and play is to go out and shop around for play structures that are similar in size. I mean, we could look at different design and different features and all that, but you just plug them right in. Um, would be easy um you know I, th I did have a thought that with the budget we have i don't think we could like regrade that landscaped area you know there's that little path 
with the bushes. It's a, it gets used a little when kids are playing tag, but not so much. Um, that's interesting in there, but I think that might be expensive because you'd have to regrade it. it yeah, and there's also um, a lot of uh, prep work that has to go on um, the, the fall material and how far down the, um, how far down you dig to have enough um, fall material to provide the, the appropriate cushioning for someone to fall. The playgrounds are pretty deep and there's drainage installed. So there's a lot, there's like a lot of infrastructure at the bottom that we don't ever see um, underneath all the, you know, wood chips. And so that, that would be a pretty big addition to the project to, to make that area with the path um, appropriate to add play structures on. So I, I don't think it would be feasible in th this particular project that we're doing, but definitely something that we could consider down the road. Um, but there's just kind of a lot that goes into that, that aspect of it. And then how about like the, the picnic benches? And then there's that beautiful bench from the Case family. We want to just assume all of those features are staying, staying where they are, right? Yeah, I would assume so. We definitely have some, you know, flexibility with, with moving stuff around and if we, if we want to, but um, I, I don't see any reason to, to take that, those features out, um, but they definitely could be, you know, we could definitely adjust things uh, if, if need be. Okay. Thanks. Well, those are some great ideas. Uh, any other questions or comments from commissioners? Ian, you were about to say something. <laughs> I was just going to ask if, if I mean, um, if we want to start that sort of survey thing between now and the next meeting, or would we rather? And I, I can, I, I. And I put myself back on mute because I realize I can just talk offline with Eric and Luke about this. But, you know, if you guys are really slammed right now, and even if I put the survey together, I'm sure it will trigger questions from the public and things like that. And if you guys would rather put that off and we don't feel like we need to do that right away, then I won't bother you guys with it. Um, but if that's something that we feel like would be good to get going, then I can help do that. In the coming yeah, months. what I might, I appreciate that, Ian. Thank you. What I might um, suggest is if maybe, uh, you know, just kind of bouncing some emails back and forth between you, me, and Luke um, between now and the next meeting, we could design that survey and then present that to the commission before we launch it and go live with it and get any other feedback or maybe some questions or inputs that we're missing. Um, and that way, uh, all of the commission and anybody else who wants to weigh in can get some, uh, you know, provide some feedback to what we're about to launch out to the public to get, uh, um, you know, on surveys is something I have a little bit of a professional background in, in the, uh, as well. So, but I, I'd like to get some eyes on it before we push it out there. So I think, I think a realistic doable goal is to have something like that, that we can present and include in the packet for the next commission meeting. Um, and I think that still keeps us well within the timelines that we want to achieve and everything else. If uh, I don't know if any other commissioner or Luke has a thought on that or Lisa or anybody, but uh, I, me personally, I, I think it could be very beneficial before we push a survey out there just to share it with some extra eyes um, in the auspices of this meeting uh, and then we launch it, you know, darn near immediately thereafter. Yeah, it's, uh, I think that's great. And as far as staff busyness um, being almost into May, the snowball is rolling, and it's you know now <laughs> now's a great a time as any. It's only going to get busier uh, in, in some aspects as we get closer to summer. So this is great. Seems like a good idea to me because if we find out that to keep within our budget, we really need to sort of plug into the existing size spaces that we have. And we think, well, we need to keep the swings here and we need to do a similar size play structure here and there. Then that's good to know. Like if we can't afford to do a total overhaul, for example, to do some kind of super cool nature park, then we want to maybe know that going into the survey. It might help tailor some of the questions, right? Um, to if we're going to you know, be giving kind of any hints on what we're thinking or something like that. Yeah, I think that's, that makes, makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, if I'm, if I'm kind of summarizing this, I think, if Ann had opportunity to just start looking at some uh, relative costs of structures, realizing that that probably doesn't include installation and everything else, uh, but maybe it does, maybe it's an all-in-one package, just to give some examples of, you know, this type of structure at this size and scope, uh, you can anticipate it being between X and Y amount in uh, part, you know, material cost, uh, 
And then that could, to your point, help finalize and guide what Ian uh, could hopefully put together, which would be, you know, here's something to get out to the public to start getting the word out, start getting in public feedback and keeping uh, within reasonable expectation, let's just say, of uh, what is actually practical and possible. I, I think those are two really good goals for the next meeting if it could be accomplished. I agree. Uh, anything else from commissioners? And then I would ask for uh, any public comment on this. One second. Stephen. Thank you. Hey guys, just wanted to add one quick thing. Um, is that, you know, although you guys know I love monkey bars, but um, that aside, <laughs> I'm gonna be looking at this with an open mind to see what we can do with our budget. So it's my intent to make calls and look across the variety of options that might be available to us with an open mind as we start the initial scoping. So just know that I, it won't be, I'm not gonna approach this with a narrow um, point of view as for what I want, because I think we need the community input. I wanna hear from the rest of the commissioners and hear from the public around what's gonna be the best playground for us. So um, yes, yeah. so I love monkey bars, but we're gonna look at everything and <laughs> we'll go from there. <laughs> Both my girls would vote for monkey bars too. Would they? Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Okay, if there's nothing else, we'll move on to the next item, which is the item number seven, the Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Report. I'm sure you've all had time to review that. Uh, Mr. Fretwell, is there anything you'd like to comment on that? Thanks, John. Uh, yeah, I'll just um, highlight just a couple items, and then if anyone wants to, has any questions or wants to discuss anything further, um, please let me know. Um, there's one thing that, that just wrapped up uh, a couple weeks ago was our latest virtual art show, which 
um, which started out as, as kind of a bummer for us to not be able to have um, another art show in person and have to just exhibit all these beautiful works of art on online, which, you know, def definitely um, lacks something. But, but in the end, we ended up with um, an amazing amount of um, engagement with, with people online, more than we were um, ever expecting. In some days, we had up to over 800 um, different people viewing uh, artwork on uh, some of these these artworks and way more than we would ever have at our art show in person. And so um, it was really neat to, to have so many people engaging and, and a, a big thanks to uh, Carolyn for uh, making it, doing all the technical background to get all of the artwork displayed on, on the different websites and social media. And, um, and for Susan Press for once again, putting on a, a great show. It's just a, a neat um, aspect of our, our programming that is very unique. And um, I was just, very pleased we were able to keep that going in spite of not being able to have everyone here in person. So um, just a big thanks to them. And, and um, we're glad we didn't really lose momentum in spite of uh, everyone being, you know, sort of isolated and doing this all online. So that was a neat thing. Um, another highlight of, of my report is just that um, we are in the process of filling spots. We did increase enrollment for summer camps after Marin moved into the orange tier. And we upped from, as I put in there, uh, we were taking 14 kids per summer camp and um, we have increased that 25 and um, so we've been contacting uh, everyone on the wait list this last couple of weeks uh, letting them know that their kids have gotten in and asking them to to confirm and pay for those spots and it's been a big big process so logistically um, we've been trying to fill over 500 camp spots um, and the phones have just been ringing off the hook as we've been uh, dealing with that trying to to just make sure everyone gets gets a the spot in the order that they are on the wait list and so it's been a, a big long process but um things are almost full finally and um we're, we're going to go into summer probably with um uh maxed out for for the enrollment that we're taking and, and we're very pleased with that so i'm very appreciative of all of our recreation staff uh who've just been up here manning the phones uh as much as they can all day and uh, carolyn has been taking the the, the lion's share of that and um, she's pretty talked out by the time she leaves every day and I just really appreciate her putting putting all the effort into to help us get all those spots filled and make sure all those kids uh, get into the camp so that's been um, a huge ordeal but it's uh, it's been it's going really well and we're, we're looking to be um, have everything filled up before the end of uh, or early, early next month so that's been great um, and then uh, the, the, the biggest news uh, is we, we were able to fill our um, vacant recreation supervisor position um, and have hired uh, John Paul Kessler, who um, is someone that has worked for Marinwood for many, many years. Um, he was actually a lifeguard when I first started. I inherited him. I did not hire him, but uh, uh, I think he was a second year lifeguard when I um, started uh, in that position. And um, he worked here for a, a solid, I think, 10 years, uh, maybe more, and then uh, left and did a bunch of other things and went off and, and uh, had a bunch of other jobs and, and things. And um, we've kept in touch and he's continued to, to do things for Marinwood and teach a couple classes here and there for me and we and, and all that. But uh, uh, it ended up working out and, and we ended up um, being able to bring him in for this position. And um, he's just started last week. And we're very pleased to, to have that spot filled and with someone that um, has worked here before and knows um, Marinwood, and knows the pool backwards and forwards. And so um, just I'm very excited and pleased to announce that and hopefully get to introduce him to, to all of you at a meeting sometime soon. But um, uh, those of you that hang out at the pool can keep an eye out for him. Um, he also has a beard as a little shorter than me, but um, we'll see him. So that's been, uh, been a, a nice thing to, to check the box on that and get that position filled and get him up. We're working on getting him up to speed on everything. And um, it's, it's just nice to have, have that the staff complete once again. So um, um, on the other side of the, of the coin here, moving on to, to parks maintenance, um, I'll just touch on where we're still uh, working on filling our vacant position on the parks maintenance staff and um, promoting, promoting for that. And, it's taken a little bit longer than we were hoping, but we're just trying to get um, some good candidates in there and um, working hard. And right now, Marco and Estevan are pulling their weight, uh, making things happen with being uh, down one uh, down one guy. And um, I'm very pleased with with how much they've been able to get done. Uh, Estevan just had a baby on March 20th, uh, and so he was out for a little while, um, helping 
his uh, family, you know, recover from that and, and dealing with being a new dad. Uh, but he's back, thank goodness, and um, back in action. It's been great to have him back. And um, so that's uh, been a struggle. Just Marco was doing one man job for, for a few days there and, um, and, and he's working very hard to help keep things going. So I'm very, very pleased with, with the, the park staff that, you know, and all the work that they've been doing. Um, and the, the main project continues to be the, the re-landscaping of the Fireman's Hill where we had the large bay tree come down um, last, last year. And um, they've been making a lot of progress. We have to keep taking breaks to deal with regular maintenance issues and, and just general maintenance around the rest of the parks and uh, community center and pool. But um, the area is starting to come together. Uh, we've replaced a retaining wall, um, replaced up irrigation, uh, put down the wood chips, weed barrier, working on redoing the path. And um, eventually, a little bit later this season, or the next season, we'll be adding um, some plantings and uh, some, uh, some other landscape things. But for now, we're getting the area really cleaned up. And, um, and and ready to go for for what we end up doing with it. So that's been um, our a big focus as we as we deal with everything else. Um, and that's I think I'll touch on uh, specifically. Please let me know if you'd like to discuss anything or have any any questions about any of that. How's the staff um, dealing with the temporary maintenance structure? Um, the temporary maintenance structure uh, leaves some things to be desired. Um, it's definitely the cha biggest challenges with it are um, the fact that all of the tools and supplies from, from the old park uh, facility are currently being housed in containers on shelves. And so um, there's just a lot, a lot in there, a lot of bins and, and we've labeled things pretty well, but um, there's just an extra step of having to find everything. And, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a lot of different tools and pieces and hardware to, to catalog and, and, and figure out. So uh, that's added a couple extra headaches, not knowing exactly where everything is all the time for a given maintenance concern or a repair. Um, but um, generally speaking, I, I've been very impressed with Marco and Esteban. They've had great attitudes about um, having to make that adjustment. Um, it's been cramped quarters in, in the little mobile office, but um, they've been made do and um, as far as fitting all the, the equipment and gear in there, um, we've been able to keep things relatively dry with some car carport canopies and um, in the, the shipping containers that we're using for everything have been working out. Um, there's definitely, uh, it's crowded and you have to move a lot of things to get equipment out uh, from time to time. Uh, so there's a few, just a few extra hassles to, to be able to do the normal jobs, but um, uh, ultimately, they, they've been they've been rallying and, and making it work, and um, we've been strategizing and doing little little remodels of the of, of the shelving here and there to, to keep improving the the process. But um, it's it's going okay. It's not ideal, but but they've been doing a good job with it. I guess I would like to comment, Luke, that uh, you know having that good response to that art show, uh, the virtual response that in the future when you do go back to in person viewing, it might be nice to also have it available virtually. And I realize that would be a, a, additional work to, you know, to put a, a program like that together. But uh, that sounds like a, you know, that you wouldn't have to come down or if you couldn't, you could still see it, you know, from wherever. Yeah, John, I think that's um, uh, so something we've definitely been been talking about. It was um, it was no small effort to get all of the artwork uh, on online and, and get things photographed and and sized right and we getting it out there and making it look nice. But uh, but I think there are definitely some options for how we could uh, make the art show available to people that can't make it down in person. I, I think that's something we will definitely be considering for our next installment, seeing how we might do that, whether it's with some sort of video of the work as it's already displayed in the community center or um, or we could do something similar um, if we can convince Carolyn to, <laughs> to do that again. So that might be a challenge. Uh, anything else from commissioners? Oh, well, one quick question. Um, and if it's not a quick question, we could take it as a future agenda item, but are we expected to be impact by, impacted by drought restrictions? There was you know, some initially some pretty restrictive residential restrictions that were proposed and then rolled back by the water department with you know, kind of a note that, oh, we'll come back to those in a couple of weeks, like you know, refilling the pool, irrigating, landscaping once a week. So I'm just curious if 
the marine wood properties are exempt from those? Or are you anticipating any, any considerable drought restrictions that might come this summer? Um, Eric, I've, re I've read through the latest, but I, I don't know if you know more than I do on that. Um, I know we're using all reclaimed water for all of our irrigation. And so the, that's not being restricted as of right now, but um, I know they're gonna revisit irrigation in the coming weeks. They haven't specifically spelled that out, but Eric, do you have, do you have more information on exactly what's going on with yeah, that? I, I sat in on a meeting with representatives from uh, Marin Municipal Water Department, as well as the Nevada Water Department. They presented to park, uh, park agencies up and down the county in kind of an informal meeting. Uh, Luke hit the nail on the head in terms of, you know, I don't anticipate the, the treated uh, recycled water to be impacted. In fact, I think they are going to, the, the water departments are trying to find ways to get more of that water into the hands of, uh, you know, kind of basic residents and, you know, contemplating filling stations with some of the hydrants that are located. One's actually right in front of our agency. Um, in terms of our regular water use, they didn't talk uh, tremendously about, you know, separating out business, uh, government agency, uh, residential, other than their goal right now is a district wide, um, meaning the water district wide 40% reduction. Um, the mandatory uh, things that they have in place, they didn't do anything about the pools at this moment in time. They do have, uh, they do have like decorative fountains aren't to be filled or refilled or topped or anything. Uh, most of it was still geared towards residential use, things like car washing. Um, and then there's variances to everything as well. So if they do issue something about a pool, then there would be um, very, very likely variances for public pools at public agencies that serve, you know, much larger numbers than your typical backwater pool or backyard pool. Uh, even though ours has 10 times the amount of gallons of a large residential pool. Um, I, and John, I don't know if you guys have heard anything through open space and parks on, on that as well in terms of water usage, but it's certainly, it's certainly something that we're all keeping an eye on as a district here, you know, Robin and Luke and I have certainly talked about it and saying, okay, what are ways that we can do to help conserve? Uh, what are some of the activities that we do that maybe we might need to scale back to help conserve? Uh, not only for the realistic aspect of it, but just also the public perception of it as, as well, um, because it's a big deal right now. And the lack of water is at historic levels, um, especially within Marin Municipal. So I don't know. I'm sorry, John. Uh, yeah. You anything. yeah, we've talked about it a little bit at the county. And I mean, it's the fact that we're using uh, reclaimed water. As far as I understand, there's no restrictions on that. Because um, right. that's we're in that same camp for some of our parks like McGinnis and McNears and Paradise, whereas the, those are, those that are odd. Well, actually, I'm not sure about Paradise, but McGinnis for sure. It's unreclaimed, and um, so there's no restrictions. Um, but I think you know it kind of begs the question. I don't know if we've done this in the past, but we should probably create some kind of PR to let folks know that this is reclaimed water. Yeah, we do have some small signs out and they have offered up um, more signage and also not just signage about uh, the reclaimed water aspect of it, but also um, just helping to spread the word towards uh, conservation of water this year. And they have a lot of signs and a lot of things. Um, most of the agencies were very amiable to saying, sure, we'll post, you know, whatever you want uh, around our properties as best we can as well. So we're certainly trying to help on that front. I, I, I think it's on the forefront of a lot of people's minds who pay attention, but you can never shout it out from the rooftops uh, loud enough when it comes to this, because it's, it's to Anne's point, it's a, it's a real situation this year. And the reservoirs are down to like 52% of uh, what they should be at this time of year. So it's, it's, it's scary. Yeah, it really feels like the new norm and it's felt like that for a few years now. And the, the fact that we're already piped for reclaimed, we're very lucky. Yeah, yes. I, I had a comment um, at the risk of uh, opening a, a box, but um, I just want to say, it was, and I, I told Luke this in person when I saw him, but um, the pathway off of Quietwood 
Um, the first time I walked on it after they worked on it, I, I like didn't even notice it. I just like, it was, it was, I thought it was so well done and unobtrusive and it, they graded it and it was sort of uh, much more successful than I had imagined it when I heard it described. Um, it's been a few weeks since I've been on it, so I don't know if it's any different now, but I, I, I was really impressed and it seemed like, you know, it may need a little bit of maintenance moving forward, but at least my first impression from it was um, very positive. So I just wanted to say thanks for doing that and see if anyone else had had a chance to walk on it yet. I, I did walk on it and I talked with Luke about it. And, um, you know, I, I think what Luke explained to me that the work is not done and that the, the ramp will likely extend out to reduce the grade even more. Um, it's, you know, we've kind of kicked this around prior to death at this point. It's, it's not subject to ADA. It, it doesn't meet any of those needs. But, but with that said, we know there's a lot of older folks using that pathway. I, I would personally like to see that grade reduced. And I think um, Luke has the, those plans in mind. Yeah, I'll, um, that's, that's right, John. And, uh, and Ian, thank you for, for the feedback. Um, yeah, our goal, we, had, we hadn't really used this material or done um, a sloped uh, project like this before or quite, quite like this. So um, we wanted to, you know, we smoothed, smoothed it out and reduced the grade um, on the first go around. I wanted to see how it set and how, how it um, settled after it dried and got some use and, and to see how it was weathering. Um, but the goal is definitely to, to go back in there and, um, and do more and, and definitely uh, reduce the grade more as we can. So now that we've gotten to see how um, it, is, it, is, it is set and, and how the material is hardened and, and to see how it's, um, you know, once people have been walking on it, uh, it's given us an idea of um, how well that worked. And, and now we, we know, you know, how this next go around is going to go. So we definitely are not done yet. And we plan on um, doing more work on that to, to further reduce and smooth out the, the grade um, as we can get around to it, so. Okay, anything else from commissioners? Then I'd ask for any uh, public comment on our recreation and uh, park maintenance activity report. Uh, one second, please. Yes, there's quite a bit of material covered. I'll, I'll do the, my best to stay within the time, but uh, uh, let's see. Going back to hiring JP, if none of you know JP, JP's a really nice guy. I've been a um, lap swimmer for many, many years, um, and JP is a really friendly guy, and, and I think uh, he'll be a great addition to the permanent staff. Um, so, uh, Please make an effort to get to know JP. Um, the uh, second thing is, uh, you know, as a lap swimmer, my costs have gone astronomical this year, going to uh, uh, per per uh, lap swim of, uh, by appointment. It's just outrageously expensive, and I hope uh, we can uh, relook at that issue because. As a taxpayer, you know, basically I am not getting, I think, what, what I deserve from our public pool, which is access um, at a reasonable rate. There's no other group uh, that is paying so much more uh, to access our facilities as lap swimmers. None. And they're seniors. Now, with regards to um, hiring a new staff member, um, I would suggest that person, this is a great opportunity to find somebody with a little bit more open space um, experience, someone who understands trail construction, design, uh, erosion, some of those skills that we seem to be lacking within our staff. Um, I also suggest that we get a, a quad runner so we can get up into the open space easily for some of these construction uh, maintenance, construction and maintenance projects. So I guess what I'm uh, saying is that this is a good time to maybe revisualize uh, what that staff uh, should uh, look like and, and the duties that it should entail. 
Um, this is going to be especially important as we're trying to manage the erosion issues as a result of, you know, the fire clearance. So this, like I said, uh, you know, maybe John Campo has some ideas in this area. Um, let's see. Um, with regards to some of the other issues, uh, yes, we should, all, all of our, our projects, uh, I guess the art show went well, that's great. You know, I, my suggestion is that the artist be required to submit photographs uh, as you know, part of their submission to the art program, and then you're you're taking care of. Then you're just uploading photos. It's not a big deal. Um, gosh, I'm I'm, I'm actually you, uh, there's so much to talk about, and I'm I'm not so sh sure that I I am going to get all the points that I wanted to say. Um, so I guess I'll just uh, complete yeah. it like that. Okay, thank you, Stephen. Uh, item number eight are uh, items of interest for uh, future agenda items. Sounds like we'll uh, bring back the Park Place Structures Replacement Project next month. Anything else from commissioners? Uh, I don't have anything immediately. I just want to put out there, uh, John, and to the commission, uh, that next month I have a minor conflict I'm trying to resolve. And then for June, I will be out of, uh, I, I will not be at that meeting. So I will be uh, kind of uh, uh, dependent upon Luke to help kind of get us going and uh, moving with all of this stuff. So uh, I should be at May, but there's a chance I won't be. And I can tell you now, I will not uh, be at the June meeting. And in fact, the May meeting is, uh, May 25th. Okay, yeah, I'll just have to look back, but I know uh, I know that I will be out on the June 22nd meeting. So just for what that's worth. Not that yeah. Luke and crew isn't entirely capable, uh, probably more so than without me. Can we add um, the uh, maintenance facility to the agenda to get updates on that? Sure. Uh, and John Campo had raised the uh, a, a desire to have like a report at some point on the Horn Trail on Blackstone, Can Blackstone Canyon. I, I by no means am suggesting that needs to happen in the next couple months because it sounds like we've got some other busy stuff, but I just want to make sure that doesn't get lost entirely in the shuffle. So just flagging that for a future meeting down the road. Yeah. Thanks for that, Ian. That's right. Yep. Yeah, we can definitely, definitely, um, up to you guys on that and add that to my reports. Anything else from commissioners? Is this an item that requires a public comment? Uh, you have a comment on it, yes. Okay. Steve. Yeah. So, so I asked the question uh, before, uh, how do we, uh, you know, increase, how, how do we dialogue with you guys? Um, I, you know, as you can tell from my comments, especially this evening, that actually, uh, you know, it's not a question of, you know, disagreement with anything, uh, but it's a question of, you know, simply wanting to um, shape the future of our community. As a community member, I th think I do deserve some sort of input. Um, now, maybe maybe some of you don't want to do that, but I would like you guys to think about how you can increase public involvement. Um, this is your legacy. This is our community. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Anything else from commissioners? From staff? From directors? 
<laughs> then I would uh, seek to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. I move. Second. Ian. Thank you, John. All in favor? Good night. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you, everybody. Have Thanks. a nice week. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Hey, John. Yes. Hey, um, I just want to apologize. I didn't uh, get to you this morning.